Hi, I'm Gordon Wade at Wade Research. This is an 18 inch F4.4 Newtonian primary mirror. Uh, this is an old mirror, relatively speaking. It was manufactured in 1988 uh, by a well known commercial shop. And back in those days, an 18 inch mirror was a giant mirror. They had very little experience manufacturing mirrors this size and uh, not a lot of good tools and uh, software and such to, to help them do the job. So a lot of them are not great performers. The person that owns this mirror called me up and asked if I would test it and uh, I did so. And before I, as I tested it I asked him how it performed. And uh, for example on the planet Jupiter if he'd observed Jupiter with this mirror he could barely make out a couple of bands and uh, maybe see the great red spot if he knew he should be able to see it. But all in all, no detail really was available. Uh, during this era, big mirrors got this reputation for not being good for planetary work because they wouldn't show the detail. People used them for galaxies and things like that as a light bucket. But they made the excuse that such a big mirror had too much air over it and the air currents would mess things up and such. And uh, thus you, you were told not to use these mirrors for planetary and not to expect much uh, in the way of detail. But we know now that that is just a, kind of a bad story. And if the mirror is properly figured and meets uh, today's modern standards for premium mirrors, these can be just glorious, glorious mirrors for use on planetary objects. And when you go and look at uh, open clusters and nebulosity galaxies, you can see detail that you never could see with the original mirrors. Now when I tested out this 18-inch mirror, what I found was it's a little worse than one half wave. It's actually quite a little bit worse than one half wave. And it's severely undercorrected. When we test a mirror, you have a, a certain range that the test numbers are supposed to be within uh, for full correction. And this mirror is only 80% of that range that you'd like to see. So it's only 80% corrected and it's uh, undercorrected. And mostly what I wanted to show you today was some of the techniques that I'm going to use to start to uh, correct this mirror, to, to, to make it right. I'm using some uh, cerium oxide here. And this cerium oxide I'm putting on here is much more uh, dense than I'd usually use. I wanted to use this so that you could see the cerium oxide in the, vis in the video. But for normal production work, I would have this diluted and it would be much, uh, much less white, much more runny. Now the first thing I'm going to do is to use a fairly small pitch polisher on this mirror. And I'm going to show you how I would do this if I was doing it all by hand. The pitch polisher I'm going to start with is a 5 inch diameter pitch polisher. And I hope you can see it there. It's been scalloped on the edges, uh, so some of the edges are missing. It's sort of a diamond or star configuration. Now this mirror has problems. The biggest problem is that the central zone, the center of this mirror, is severely undercorrected. It needs to be much deeper here in the center. Second problem, the mirror is generally undercorrected out to about the 6.5 inch radius, or out to about here. So I'm going to work the center deeper, and then I want to work an area out to here deeper, and then overall the entire mirror is undercorrected. Uh, when I test it, I use a zone mask, and I look at the gaps in the readings between the zones. And on this mirror, the, the delta, the difference between the outer zone and the next zone, is less than it should be, which means I have to deepen the entire mirror from the next to last zone all the way in. So really there's three things I have to do, deepen the center, deepen the whole mirror out to about six and a half inch radius and deepen the whole mirror out to the next to last uh, zone. So I'll start with the five inch, five inch tool here. Now that center zone is, uh, runs from about six to seven inch diameter here. So I would start with this small tool and just do uh, some work in the center with a little W stroke to uh, start to deepen the center. And uh, basically when I'm doing figuring work I use all sorts of different kinds of strokes so that I vary what happens on the mirror. I use different strokes so you don't leave patterns and, and uh, things become smoother when you use a varying stroke. So I start with some sort of smaller stroke in the center just to start to uh, make some progress on deepening the center of this mirror. So I might work uh, quite a few minutes, five or six minutes doing that. Now then after I've got that center work down I'd use the same five and a half inch tool and widen it out a little bit into a bigger W pattern. And the goal here, this W will continue to deepen the center, but it will also deepen the rest of the mirror, or the, the, the area that I'm, I'm touching as well. So this is kind of doing zones one, two, and three, uh, looking at an eight or nine zone mask here. 
So I use a W pattern like this to, to continue to deepen the center area of this mirror. Now you notice the W pattern I'm using, back and forth and back and forth, and then I rotate the mirror in my hand, or the, the tool in my hands, the pitch polisher in my hands, and do it, another pattern, rotate it, and keep doing it. Now, that W pattern like that works real well, it'll deepen the mirror, but the point where you stop and turn back around, stop and turn back around, you're going to leave up a pattern, a, a set of marks on the surface there. So a stroke that I use to get rid of that is an elliptical stroke, where I'll, I'll work like this, where the mirror never stops and reverses direction. Instead, it's just a smooth uh, ellipse that I make as I, I go back and forth on the surface. So I'll vary the stroke uh, using this one once in a while and again once in a while you turn the tool in your in your hand so between those different strokes in this seven or excuse me this five inch tool that'll be what I use to deepen the center here a little bit then after a while I'll change over to a slightly bigger tool this is a seven inch diameter uh, pitch polisher again scalloped on the edges and I would switch over to this tool to continue the deepening work now I wanted to go out to the six and a half inch radius and so I would use this tool in a big W over that six and a half inch range and this one's kind of nice to use since this is a seven inch tool and I need to go out to the six and a half inch what I basically do is go out until I'm almost over the center with the edge of the tool and that gives me a guide as to how wide to go with this this polisher. Now actually I, I need to go and work all the way out to the six and a half inch radius but you'll notice that this tool was scalloped here in the edge so what I can actually do is to go a little wider than the six and a half inch because the action on the tool won't uh, get out as far as I need to go so I actually will go a little farther than the center here in order to uh, make sure that I'm getting all the way out to that six and a half inch radius that I'm looking for So I'll do some more W strokes with this, and then uh, again with this one I'll switch over and do big ellipses with it. And again these are just general deepening strokes. Now the one thing that you'll find if you're figuring a mirror by hand like this, uh, when you use a bigger tool and you, you cover a broader area of the mirror, you'll decorrect the center. So if you've worked a little on the center, and made a, a variance there, if you use a larger tool that difference will go away and the center will look under corrected again. So a lot of times what I'll do is to go back and forth where I'll use the small mirror in the center or small pitch polisher in the center then a larger tool and then go back and use a smaller tool in the center again to make sure that I'm getting enough depth on there. Now at this point also I'll start using an, another technique which is called center over center polishing in which case I'll go all the way out to the edge of the mirror. Now as I go all the way out I want to overhang the tool. And you see I'll go out to where I overhang about an inch and a half on each side. And what that stroke does, while it puts a lot of correction in the center part of the mirror because each stroke it touches that center area, it also puts a little correction on the whole mirror and the action will only go out to about the area here on the edge that I'm interested in. Because of the small circle here and the bigger circle out on the edge, not much action happens out there, and so you have to overhang it to make sure that some of the tool is working on the mirror. So that long center over center stroke with a little inch and a half or so overhang will put correction in the entire mirror with extra correction at the very center and the correction will stop before the edge of the mirror as long as I don't overhang too far. And this is a nice stroke too for averaging out zones on the mirror. Anytime that you stroke all the way across the mirror if you have zoniness in your mirror that will tend to average it out except at the point where the edge of the mirror, uh, edge of the tool is. With a seven inch tool here and a three and a half inch radius if I were to do this stroke a lot, I'd end up with a zone at the three and a half inch mark. To combat that, you can broaden this out into a W. So I go one to the left, one up the center, one to the right, turn it, right, center, left, center, right. So I'm, I'm only going oh, a couple inches each way here, but again, I'm putting overall correction into the mirror with an emphasis on the center. 
Now again, the mirror needs work out to the six and a half inch mark, so another stroke I'll use is to offset all the way over here. So I'm taking a stroke all the way over there, and then W back past the center, back out to that six, six and a half or seven inch range, back across again. Now this is the best stroke to use to fix that uh, the overall problem where the whole mirror needs correction all the way out to that edge. This is the stroke that will give you that correction, the difference between the outer zone and the next to last zone out there. Now the trick to doing this is you don't want to hurry and you don't want to put a lot of pressure on the mirror. It's a nice smooth stroke. You want to make sure that you have perfect contact. Every session that I do with a pitch polisher, I brush it so that I have those little scour marks on there and I get rid of any cerium oxide patina that may have built up on the mirror. You want the mirror, or excuse me, on the tool, on the, on the pitch polisher. If there's built up, caked up uh, cerium oxide on the pitch polisher, it reduces the efficiency of the polisher and uh, the feeling isn't right. It just isn't quite right. You want it to be clean with every session that you start. So those are the basic strokes that I'll use to work on this mirror. Uh, with experience, an optician learns to do several different steps all in one operation on the mirror. So I'll, I'll work the center, I'll work out to the six and a half inch radius, and I'll work the whole mirror all in one session, and then clean everything up and test the mirror, and then go back and refine my uh, technique each time to work on those areas that continue to need work. Uh, for a person doing the first mirror, or if you haven't done many mirrors, it's really good to just do one step at a time. Maybe work that center, then clean up and go test it. Make sure that it's doing what you expect it to do. Because work with uh, pitch polishers sometimes doesn't do what you think it will. Uh, a lot of the operations are counterintuitive. And uh, it just takes a lot of experimentation and a lot of reading and study to figure out exactly how to get a pitch polisher to perform on the mirror the way that you'd like. It's kind of a, a little bit of a black art, but there's a science and technique there. If you take the time to, to learn how a pitch polisher behaves and to learn the, the cause and reaction, the response that you get on the mirror to any given stroke with the polisher. So that's how I'll work on this 18 inch f4.4 mirror. Uh, we'll see if we can get it from a little worse than one half wave up above that tenth wave uh, category where we want it to be as a premium telescope mirror.